we are here with india's 25th wgm the very very talented savita shri hello savita hello hi savita you became a wgm recently uh, you were a wim for i think maybe 3 4 years ago you finished your title yeah maybe 3 years three i years. think and then you mm-hmm. achieved your final wgm norm at the fagern fagerness open in norway and uh, you had crossed 2300 long time ago i think you have also crossed 2400 so that yeah. rating was never an issue yeah it's been 6 months i think since i crossed for 2400 so yeah, and then i didn't play my tournaments right so uh, also i, I played this second as open after 6 months break in classical chess so i was not sure how it will go right and i was also a bit tense from my first round and uh, somehow i won that and then uh, yeah and then it gave me some feeling you know like there my first round after long back so yeah why were you not playing since 6 months were you studying No, I was. I mean, in the before eleventh exam, they told me to study. Hmm. So it's just in you know, a one month or something, and then, uh, and then we had some plan to play in some round robins, and also we went to this Romania for uh, for some tournaments. We planned the two to three tournaments. Okay. And uh, we went to Romain. We planned to go for Romania via Budapest. So and then in Budapest we took some train, ah, uh, and then uh, uh, we came to know that we didn't have that visa, oh. proper visa because ah uh, we had single entry. We should have multiple visa entry. Right. So we went to Budapest, and then we returned back. So that ah uh, that ah uh, two tournaments were cancelled. Oh my god. And then yeah, and then I was training, and then I played this Fagernus. Oh well, I was not aware that this happened. That you traveled and then you came back because of the visa issues. That's that's very disappointing. Uh, uh, how how no, did yeah, you deal that's, with it? That's one thing I will never forget because uh, around then midnight, yeah, we were traveling. Yeah, when we are uh, when we are about to uh, when we are about near to the border of Romania, uh, the police search. You know, the they came to investigate the. Visas and everything, and around, uh, I think it was two in the midnight. Okay. And I was just sleeping, and uh, they just came, and my father was uh, giving all this, and then they suddenly told us to get off the train. Oh my. And God. then we did, and then we we took all our belongings, and then we went to the police station, and then we stayed there for half an hour. Uh, it was very scary, you know, like no one was there. But did you understand why they were doing this, or even that was not? No, they didn't tell us anything. My God! Oh, everyone was supposed to leave the train to do something, Hmm. to you know, to sign or something like that. And then we, and then after we came out of the train, and then the train went, and we didn't understand anything. My God! And then we went to the police station, and then they told us to sit, and then the chief uh, of police or something he came. And and then he told us, and and you know the way they were talking also a bit rude, and yeah. uh, we were so scared, and um, and we just uh sat down for uh some minutes, and uh, they just uh told us to sign, and uh, we did, and uh, and yeah, and I mean now uh, the place where they told us to sit is like in a type of cell, you know. Oh my god. So and it was very scary, and then uh, we just told agreed for everything, and uh, we and then uh, they just told us to go back uh, the next train to Budapest, and uh, we said uh, we agreed to that, and then we just took that next train, which was uh three forty five something. I still that remember night. the timings. And then uh, yeah, for half an hour, I didn't talk anything to my father about it. I I I didn't even agree to that yeah because. How how is it possible for us to just to come to Budapest exactly. and without playing any tournament we are returning back, and uh, yeah and then uh, yeah somehow we returned to Budapest and we both were very afraid of uh, what happened there and then we just took the flight and then we came to the India that's 
that's oh, one of the stories that i will never forget obviously i think this is uh, like when you have planned a tournament when you have prepared for it you have uh, put in resources for it and then suddenly you can't even go to that country uh, and you are not even aware that you know you did this thing in the visa where instead of multiple entry you did single entry and stuff like that uh, yeah and then we uh, yeah uh, we applied for the next visa for multiple visa So now I think everything will be clear. So that that is one thing you will never ever forget to do multiple Yes. entry. Yes, <laughs> for sure. well, that is amazing. That's uh, ex that's kind of experience which only I think chess players get during these events. You know, it's amazing. Uh, Savita, you are two thousand seven born, right? So you are Yes. you are uh, what right now? Fifteen or sixteen years I'm old? sixteen. Uh, I'm January born, so So yeah. sixteen years old. and you have uh, already achieved so much uh, you are one of the youngest uh, indian players to achieve this title also you won the world bronze medal world rapid bronze medal uh, in kazakhstan and right now you are in kazakhstan Yes, I'm in Astana right now for a, for a tournament, for a team tournament. which is which is actually a side event to the world championship which is happening Yes, yes, so you yeah. are you are representing the rest of the world against kazakhstan Yeah, so that I think it will be fun. that will be very exciting uh, and kazakhstan is your lucky ground so we will be looking forward to it uh, let's just have a look at couple of pictures because this has been your kind of journey towards becoming a wgm you first achieved your first wgm norm by winning the asian juniors in 2021 and this is how you performed there you uh, won five rounds there and then you drew the remaining to become the champion uh, later on you achieved your second gm norm at pardubis open here you beat i think gms as well uh, if if we see you have uh, beaten one gm brian smith you've drawn against uh, a gm and then ims yeah so this was the tournament where i made my you know uh like uh, first i cannot say first wgm norm because that was uh i got it because of the title yes so this is something which boost my confidence for sure that i can do because uh this is a tournament i bet i think i bet my first gm mm and uh so it uh, gave me a lot of confidence and uh, yeah i mean the way i played was also good because i lost my last two rounds Right. so I, if i have just at least get some off a point i think i would have made an im norm so Mm. that was uh i know i also don't know about that so yeah i mean yeah this gave me a lot of confidence And I think that experience helped you helped you because here, if you see, you got those last draws. This is your third norm, uh, WGM, but also it it was your first IM norm here. that you made at the fagerness open uh, and you beat your first 2600 rated opponent i believe in this tournament Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Shadowman now was my first uh twenty six hundred to beat, yes and of course that also gives you a lot of functions. this is uh, i think this is the game that i want to look at with you uh, he is one of the strongest players in india for many years now i have lost to him several times and he's such a strong player so i want to know what is the secret of how you manage to uh, beat him so shall we go over the game Yeah, sure. okay so you are playing here with the white pieces and you opened the game with e4 and he played knight c6 did this come as a surprise Yeah, of course. Yeah, he played knight c six just to surprise me, and they just come out of all the preparations that I did for him. And uh, yeah, I was so, so surprised. And yeah, somehow I played knight f three so fast that uh, I thought he would maybe he has some chances to play e five so that I can continue my. preparation <laughs> okay but he didn't so yeah interesting of you course know it was uh, that so he surprised yes i i think it's a very interesting thing that he made this choice because generally i feel like this is maybe it's changing now uh, that you are not a big opening expert right you are more like a middle game player you want to play you want to fight you are you are creative so him not choosing uh, when he's an opening expert say to 
So him yeah, sure. closing a main line against you is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, of course I was expecting Nadov from him, mm. like uh, more of Nadov, but he he didn't. So yeah, of course. Uh, I don't know why he played night C six. Right. And uh, even though I was a bit surprised, I and I was also happy because I knew I'd get a good portion out of it. Because of course, of course, after night C six, I should. So yeah. Yeah. So knight f three. Uh, the other main move, of course, here is d four. Yeah. Uh, he went d6, you went d4. Did you remember any preparation here or you were already on your own, right? From no, no, I was already out of switch. Ah, okay. Clearly. Fantastic. So, and I played knight. Yeah, somewhere, yeah, next one I played knight d2. Yes, why did you choose putting your knight here? I wanted to play c4. Okay. And somehow, like, you know, uh, type of kid uh, setup, like just bishop d3, long castle. Something like that and uh, but engine says or the computer says I should have just played knight c3 mm. and just you know develop the pieces uh bishop d3 and the uh, castle. So it, I'm just having a lot of um I think I, I think it was around 0 0.60. Okay. Mm, so yeah, I, I should have just gone for knight c3, but I played knight d2. This is I think this is one of the mistakes I made in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, it's you can say that you played this move, which is no, maybe not the best, but it leads to an interesting position. G six. Mm -hmm. You put your bishop here. Bishop G seven. Castles. Castles. And pawn to C four. So now you've set this up uh, nicely in the center. And Setu Raman decides to play A five. He he is actually basing his strategy on dark squares. He wants to put his knight. Yeah, of course, he's just uh, continuing the kid, you know, like it's 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 very similar to kid. Uh, by so, the way, yeah, I all, almost... All our viewers who don't know kid, it's King's Indian defense. Yeah, go on, sorry. So, yeah, I almost spent uh, 30 minutes, I think. Oh. I, I'm not sure, 25, 25, I think, 25 minutes. Uh, so, he was playing extremely fast till this point. So I, I was not much uh, confident about it in, and uh, and I was trying to play fast and uh, yeah, that's that's one of his adv advantages that uh, he got it from the opening. Right. Did you, did you consider like developing your bishop? So maybe rook b1, b3, bishop b2, something like that? that makes yeah, sense? but I thought if I give him some time, he will just play knight a6 and knight c5. Right. Then it seems like it's completely fine. Hmm. So, yeah. So, you went rook e1. And uh, after knight a6, you play... This is this is very original play. I would have never thought of putting my knight on b3. But you, you say... Yeah, that... I just wanted to provoke him to play a4. But that is good for him, right? No, that is not much good for him. Because when I play knight b d4... Yeah. And I thought a4 will be a weakness. Nice. Interesting. And uh, he he can't also play a3 at some point, yeah, because b4 is coming. Mm, if he pushes the pawn, then you will push forward, yeah. I thought this is better than, you know, if he has a pawn on a5, then he says completely fine. I thought if, if he pushed a4, at least I can put some pressure. And also, if I can also play rook b1 and b4 at some point. Correct. Which... I can't do because when I play rook b1 when the pawn is on a5 and I, and I have to play a3 and I thought there he can play a4. Right, right. Yeah, I mean so general I, uh, strategy, uh, I guess, is that here you go like rook b1, b3, then a3, then b4. But I guess here you get it way faster the way you did it. Hmm. With rook b1. Okay, interesting. So bishop c2, he played e5. And I, yeah, I think, uh, uh, I mean, after the game, we've been analyzing for for more, I think, for a lot of time. Uh, he said he didn't like e5 because he, he's just closing his own bishop. Hmm. Uh, he told me uh, he should have played something like uh, a3, I think. a3, b4. I'm not pretty sure, but he told me he didn't like e5 for sure. I mean... Uh, hmm. I mean, maybe e6 could be ma could make sense, right? Just yeah, it. maybe e6 or c6 break somewhere, you know, bishop d7 and c6. Got it. 
and also at some point you can also have to play a3 in the when you have when you have correct time yeah? correct so i think e5 is not that good right he played e5 you went you didn't because i think taking off a saw would uh, make his position yeah, quite so, yeah this is this is complete battle for black right so you said so, yeah. ah, ah but are you winning a pawn there by the way bishop a4 or not how it, i mean uh, it's it's hanging right so i was just thinking i mean it's just a thought like how in the i just take it but maybe there are some tactics which i'm missing yeah i'm just could be uh, like take take but take take i have take yeah maybe bishop g4 do you have queen c2 no yeah queen c2 maybe or f3 as well maybe do you just miss this but but he can he can take but why the... why can't he just take f e ah yeah exactly he could take with the pawn as well but then maybe some e5 e5 ideas yeah then in the worst case i can move my knight like that mm. or maybe d knight e5 but yeah it 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 does seem a little risky with you know all your pieces a little bit in the air and with this bishop opening up here hmm so you played knight b5 even bd7 yeah i mean bishop d7 i don't like because my idea is to play knight c3 hmm. and he is just forcing me to because he could have just played something else but for him to come up with a plan now is not easy because f5 also your bishop is looking here so it's yeah and i also want to say he thought for like he almost spent uh, for two moves he almost spent 40 minutes okay which uh is, which is not a good sign for him for sure right and yeah and also he, he played moves like we should d7 e5 so yeah at this point i know i was better hmm. and yeah so now now your plan uh, revolves around playing on the queen side as you started with yeah bishop i just wanted to get this uh, b4 break at a uh, right moment also uh, you are now threatening to take this and take this free pawn right yeah or or was yeah. that never in your mind to take that pawn i mean it was not my first priority mm. to take it uh, on a4 for sure okay because even if i took that i think it wouldn't change much mm. he would so, have compensation yeah, it, with uh, yeah got it and uh, he he will be playing for the f5 mm -hmm. f5 break so yeah so queen e8 was played yeah he is just defending a4 and you pushed forward with b4 he he of course did opposite takes and now he came here with knight uh, g4 hmm yeah of course yeah, he should do something on uh, the king side otherwise i'm just completely better in the queen side because if i get b4 yeah uh, then knight on b7 is nothing yeah it's just it's just like a free piece for me right the piece is after it goes here doesn't have any good squares to move to so you anyway went b4 you are like okay take my bishop if you want that's fine yeah and also i i thought like uh, i could play knight e2 and uh, bring the other rook also which is a uh, helpful for me ah. so uh, otherwise i should take on c5 which i mean uh, bishop c5 instead of playing on b4 right but that that doesn't look good for me after bc5 i thought c5 knight is is like a bad piece so i should exchange it even though my a3 bishop is not that good mm. i i thought i could just give it in this way instead of giving to the knight got it so take take knight went back to b7 and now knight e2 okay what's your plan with knight e2 where is the knight heading no a uh, knight is not heading anywhere but uh, i wanted to play rook ah, e3 you, you are going this way ah, and if we right. take and if we take take and then i also want to play queen a1 rook a7 and queen a6 so if he takes, takes then you can yeah, also enter yeah if he takes then that's uh, that should be better and you have to play queen b8 at some point right 
and then I will bring my rook h3 and rook h7. And, queen and then at some point I thought I could also play knight c3 and knight b5. And then I could play queen a6. Something like this right. I thought true, and true. I know I will be better. True. Yeah. Okay, so he Setu of course very very uh, strong and he said let me do something on the king side before I'm run over on the queen side. Hmm. But you are like okay, I yeah, but f5 was never so powerful exactly. because my bishop was in c2. It's it's just fully covering everything. Eh? But if even if you take take and play bishop f5, I can play knight g3 or queen c2, and it it, it doesn't make much sense. Right, right. So yeah. So he went uh, rook b8 here. And mm. now came a very interesting move, rook 1a2. What is that? You could have gone rook a7 also, right? Yeah, I could have just gone rook a7, but uh, I I thought he didn't have any plans. So I thought I could uh, make some small improvements before mm. doing anything. But I don't think that was a good idea because I could have just played rook a7. Right. Yeah, but uh, I played rook on a2 to just to defend that uh, second file whenever he take on e4. Oh, nice. This way, the rook can be useful here. Yeah. Got it. So now you got your knight to c3. Uh, he, he went knight d8. And you came in with the rook attacking c7. So this is looking really good for you. But th there is a difference between getting a plus position and actually converting it, right, against these strong players. Because they give Yeah, but it, it's not completely winning, but although I am better. Yes. Yeah, it, I think the engine was showing something, one point something. Mm -hmm. So it means I have to do more work to convert it to win, yes, so. Tell me something, Savita, how important is the engine evaluation for you? Because your style of play is not very engine centric, right? You like to take chances. You are also, you believe in psychology a lot. Uh, like opponent may be afraid here. Here he took, uh, he or she, she took more time. You want to play a little faster, all of that. So is engine becoming more and more important as you are improving? Yeah, of course it's important, the evaluation. But... But uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, of course, it's important in opening preparation and all. But if that suits your style, then even though the portion is around equal or 0 0.10 or something, then I think you can choose and play if that suits you in your style. And because if you're playing in white, you can decide whatever you want, right? Mm. So I think, yeah, of course, uh, it is very important. Yes, because in this interview, uh, the number of times you have mentioned the engine, I think it shows that you are using it more than before. Like earlier, you would hardly ever think about it, I guess. That's that's my understanding. Maybe I am mistaken, but correct me if I'm wrong there. Yeah, but now uh, I started using cloud. So yeah, I mean, it it, it makes a lot of uh, difference yeah, to normal engine than uh, cloud engines. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not using much. I just used to, you know, uh, whenever the uh, and in a, in the end of the line, just to see the evaluation. Yeah, not bad. I'm not using. I'm not using much. Okay, okay. By the way, I would like all the viewers to pause their video here and think what was the next move Savita played because this is a beautiful move uh, that you came up with. Uh, can you also explain now how how did you come up with this next move that you played? Yeah, once he played rook c8, I, I, my c5 just got into my eyes. I, you just I, I don't know how, <laughs> how I did or how it came, but uh, c5 just came. Be and, then of, and then I was just analyzing and, uh, I mean, he can't do anything. Eh? He, he can't take on c5. I mean, he can take with a b pawn. He took with the b pawn. But, but if he took with yeah. b pawn, what's the problem? Then I have d6 d6 wow so he can't take with the queen because take take and he loses a piece here right yeah yeah and if cd6 then knight d5 is just better i mean i'm just killing mm, wow and if queen e6 or queen f7 i have knight g5 so <laughs> right. yeah queen e8 maybe. maybe and then you can take here and then knight b6 yeah got it wow so uh he took DC, you took BC. Again, DC means D6, right? So yeah. he took on E4. And now you took with the knight. Yeah. 
but even now it's not much it's not that clear mm. he he somehow he's holding right and but look at how you just completely entered from the queen side now putting pressure on d6 he went rook d8 and yeah but uh, even even after this i i don't know how to convert it true true but that's because... why your next move is such a nice one right because generally everyone's thinking uh, let's do something here let's play c6 let's play cd6 but nothing's yeah but uh, when we are analyzing uh we thought i should have played h3 okay instead of h4 is is h4 a, a, a sort of a waiting move clearing back yeah, bank yeah no uh, i wanted to play h4 because i wanted to play h5 and okay. queen d3 okay that that was my idea but i just missed this silly move bishop g4 uh -huh. which gives him a lot of compensation i have to play queen d3 yeah, uh, and we saw bishop f3 queen f3 queen h4 something like that hmm. but in general shouting up in this point was shouting what yeah just cd no yeah just cd6 take 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 and i have queen of seven take ah uh, but he has me may... yeah maybe maybe some rook f yeah and also h4 if if he have played bishop g4 then the game must have gone I mean right. I mean gone on I don't know maybe bishop g4 queen d3 and he was so less on time so he took here and he thought that now what's the problem because my bishop earlier which was hanging i have defended it so what is the issue but you yeah but i was also very shocked about, of this move because i knew he will he have seen d6 and i thought he knew it, it's completely better for me but he still played it and i thought for a minute and then i played d6 because i don't have anything else right and and the thing is he he can't do c d6 now uh because yeah it's just the same thing no but there is no knight coming to d5 no your knight is on e4 already i thought knight d6 i mean d7 is completely hanging no ah no right. same okay okay so oh okay you mean what happened in the game similar he took with the knight and then did yeah, he, and did then, he resign uh... already here after you took no he got flagged oh he lost on time yeah so but anyway this position is completely losing for him yeah this is just total okay uh and if he took on city yeah and then he can't save the bishop wow what a finish that was and what a game yeah i like this game because he is a solid player yes and i didn't give him any chance I I think that for instead of H four, if I played H three, then it would have been a great game. Yeah. Because H four just allowed Bishop G four, so instead of that, if I played anything else, and uh, I would have been more happy. But uh, yeah, that's where H four and Knight D two. I think that's the two moves I mm. I missed. I mean, I'm I made a mistake. Well. if you make two mistakes and can still beat 2639 uh, that's already a great <laughs> great uh, result but savita yeah. was wonderful seeing your game also the way in which you are evolving as a player playing different types of positions in different ways that is very uh, very nice to see uh, just wanted to look at a few of the people and few of the organizations who have supported you uh, i have this uh, here uh this is your picture at the west bridge office uh and you in vaka uh, uniform tell us how is your uh, how has been your experience working with the west bridge anand chess academy because i think it's been what roughly 6 months since you started working yeah it's more than 6 months i think hmm. so yeah vaka i mean uh, it's 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 where i learned almost ev most of everything because it's they have everything i mean like guys ki so uh, you suppose you and uh, i mean it's it's such a pleasure for me to work with them because they are they all are very legend you know they work with uh, most of the world champions right so I, i'm just very grateful for this opportunity and uh, yeah i learned i learned a lot especially from your sponsors and games uh because 
which that is some end games is something that uh, I don't like, mm. and uh, yeah, but, I mean, he just he also showed me how interesting it can be, uh, especially in joke and games and all. Oh. So yeah, I mean, and also Gavaski saw his opening materials are also extremely good. Brilliant! That's so good to know. And do you get time chance to interact with Vishy Anand? Yeah, we do. Uh, for the classes, and also I have to tell my schedule uh, what I'm go- gonna do in this month. So, yeah, we do in WhatsApp. So, so you have become more uh, disciplined in general. Like, do you work more hours on chess, uh, also on fitness, and does that happen? Fitness, I'm not so sure. Because I did some uh, before Faganals, uh, because I was just sitting on home. I, I was not doing much. So I thought I should do something and I was doing some cardio. Hmm. And I used to play uh, cricket or football with oh. my brother. So that in, in the night, so we used to play for half an hour for some minutes. So that's one of the things. And apart from that, coming to chess, yes, uh, and... Uh, before my 11th exam, I think I was doing much uh, in chess. And after that, uh, after yeah, before playing Faganas, I also worked a bit. Uh, and, and now, after Faganas, I just came here. So yes. I think I will work more harder than before. Brilliant. Brilliant. You, you spoke about your brother with whom you sort of play uh, cricket, football and so on. I have a picture here with your entire family. Uh, that's also uh, on the left is Frederick, who is the co-founder mm. of Chessbase and his son Martin on the left, along with your family, uh, that is your father, brother, mother. And and who do you know who is on the extreme right? He is the owner of that crocodile park. Ah. So we went to visit this crocodile park, which is near to Mahabalipuram. Mm. So he was the owner and he was just explaining <laughs> For the thing uh, of how crocodile lives and uh, what he does, da- what he do- does, and uh, and he was just telling some stories of snakes and all those things. Okay, got it. But this picture is roughly, I I believe, three years ago. Um, no, it was very. I think it's around four and a half years, maybe, because it happened. Uh, happened when the camp was yeah. going on. So it was twenty twenty. So then, yeah, then it should roughly be three, three, years. three years and three months. Three to four, yeah. Three yeah. yeah. Um, tell us, a, tell us the role of your uh, family because uh, I know that your father travels with you and has been by your side here. But your mother here, uh, she is also in the picture, and also your brother. Uh, what does yeah. he do? Does he also play chess? I mean, uh, he was the main reason for me to play chess. Because he started first, oh. and uh, I got interest from him. I mean, whenever he goes, uh, whenever he sees chairs or when he walks on it, I just go and disturb him. And then I used to, and then I started to sit with him and then to play. So I mean, that's the first time I got interest in chess. At at the age of five, I think. Okay. And then we both were playing together in the local tournaments. So that's because then I started playing chess and then I started playing state and nationals and then uh, th- that's how my career started. Mm. But he stopped playing uh, because he wanted to concentrate more on studies. So he stopped playing long Is back ago. Rated? Yeah, he was rated 1500. Okay, okay. What's his name? His name is Mugesh. Mugesh, okay. Yeah. And, and your mother... So he- Ah, sorry, and sorry, go on, my, please, my... please, uh, finish about your brother. I didn't want to break it. What, what yeah, is he doing now, now he's doing a uh, triple E in VIT. Okay, brilliant. In final year. So, yeah, and also, uh, he's the one who helped me in the 10th exams. Uh, in terms so, of studying, yeah? In terms of, yeah, in especially in my 10th exams, like uh, when my exams are in 11th, I used to study a lot on 10th night. So, especially on that, I mean, in every night, he's the one who used to help me in uh, every subject. Wow. So, and uh, that's, and I also used to get, you know, uh, those type of questions exactly what he told me. Really? 
So yeah, that's something how much he experienced and experience helped him. So yeah, he also has main studies. Then about my mom, she is everything. I mean, she takes care of the whole thing. Even in my home, she just, she just tells me, uh, I don't have to do any household chores. And she just wanted me to focus on chairs or study. And uh, of course, cooking. She does everything with what I like. Oh. And well, what's my... your favorite food? I mean, I like rasam rice. And mostly I used to tell her to do some snacks, you know. That, mm. That's something I like. I always ask you this question, you know, whenever you win something every few months, because I want to see if it's changing. Maybe now, after a few months, your favorite food has changed. So. Yeah, now I like pasta more. Oh, okay. So I used to tell my mom to do that. Okay. But some, yeah, that's something. And of course, she also helped me in 10th exams to study Tamil. That, that's one of my subjects. So yeah, I mean, it, it's just a perfect family who helped me a lot. Brilliant, so. brilliant, and uh, of course your dad is even here. I think he's just nearby you. Uh, he's always traveling with you to the tournaments, and uh, I think he he knows now. He must have also become a strong chess player, yeah. <laughs> Little bit. <laughs> what do you expect me to say? Yes. <laughs> no, no, I'm just. No, I mean. I, I don't know, maybe because, you know, every time, literally every time, he just uh, uses his engine. Mm. So that's something. I mean, even I, when I finish my games, he used to tell me where I made my mistake using the engines. Mm. So I don't know, maybe the opening names and maybe the end games, you know, I don't know. Right. Something. Okay. okay interesting <laughs> you know i'm going to interview him one day when you will become a gm that is what i have decided so at that point i will ask him how strong he is and all of that uh so there's one more picture which i wanted to show you and it's a very interesting one uh it has been taken several years ago i think roughly around 2018 maybe 2019 perhaps. yeah 2018 or 19 i think yeah <clears throat> and the person who is taking the picture on the left is deepan um and yeah if you know what i remember about this is that deepan lived in london he traveled to this tournament where you were playing i guess it was in switzerland uh if i'm no, not i was in austria i think austria. i was in greece Okay, in Austria, and then he saw you and he saw the talent that you have, and he decided to do a sort of a campaign in his locality to support you uh, with some financial support. Mm. And uh, that was, I guess, the first time when someone uh, sort of supported you with with sponsorship. And so, do these this this experience do you remember did it change something in you or you were like too young and you just played chess uh what do you remember i think i was roughly what 12 or 11 but yeah. i even i think that was the first time where i get my uh a sponsor mm. i mean he was the one who uh gave his own money mm for the first i mean uh the first time he gave us our own money his own money he spent so that is something first of all you know not everyone will do that i mean i'm even now i'm very grateful to him for what he has done i mean because you know he even traveled to austria yeah he was he came there for some uh office work to the to some near near austria but he even came to the austria just just for one day, he came for the playing menu and then he just saw me and he, he just, you know, boosted me my confidence. And of course, that's something, you know, I don't know whether the, I'm, I was just truly grateful to him. So even now, my father is very connected with him. Whatever I do or he just tells whatever I'm doing. So, yeah, of course, I'm very grateful to him and... Uh, because that's the point i think uh, we need we needed we needed financial support right so at that point he he just came up and uh, he just gave us some money and he just helped so of course i will never forget him brilliant that's so nice to know and i i think 
uh, that is the period when you know you are there when you are talented young when you are facing i think when that help comes and then everything comes together i guess now things are flowing for example you have uh, good training you have good tournaments you are performing well uh, so i'm sure you your chess career will progress but i think that was a very critical phase as you rightly mentioned uh, but talking about support i think it's very nice that uh, recently an announcement was made that pravaha foundation uh, is also going to support you uh, and Vantika, she also became an IM recently. So it's very nice that they decided to support both of you. She became an IM. You finished your WGM title. Uh, how does that feel? You know, uh, uh, I think they are like now your uh, will become your full time sponsor. Yeah, it's it's great to have uh, Revaha sponsoring me, and uh, I mean not just for sponsoring me, also they have been my uh, support. Like uh, I mean. Not just about financially, they also uh in and uh, they called me and uh, in some bad situations and they just uh encouraged me that wow. I can do more. Amazing. And uh, and of course I'm very grateful to them for this sponsor, and uh, yeah, of course I I like to work with them more. Brilliant. Well, uh, Savita, it was an absolute pleasure uh listening to you, um how how you achieved your wgm title but as we all know and as i think you also know this is just a small milestone in your path to to going forward because you are so strong so dedicated you have so many ambitions i i believe your your ambition would be to very soon uh, achieve the im and gm title as well right yeah i, I like to finish my IM title in uh, three to four months. I'm right. trying to finish it in three to four months. Well, will there be any classical tournaments that you will play coming days? I'm not pretty sure because my dad is the one who chooses the tournaments. But I think I will be playing something in May. In May. End okay. of the May, I think. Well, we'll be following you for now. All the best for this uh, rest of the world versus Kazakhstan tournament. And thank you so much for giving your time uh, for, for this interview. Thank you. Bye.